Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to look especially today at that reading from Isaiah. Uh, and I, I did chuckle a bit at how the topic once again revolves around food, uh, especially after last week. And after talking to somebody this morning, anybody ha have pizza last week? Pizza. When you did normally, might have had, not, might not normally. So some suggestions from the pulpit, I guess. Attention to people. We'll start selling sponsorships for uh, stuff to help us out. <clears throat> While you were growing up, and, and maybe maybe close your eyes for a second to, to help draw the picture into your head. While you were growing up, did your mom, maybe dad, maybe grandma, have a favorite dish, a favorite dish of yours, something that they cooked that you absolutely loved, right? Mom's cooking was always the best. It's kind of a cliche. It's such a such a truth there. My mom was no exception. By the way, so hold that image in your head. Keep keep that there, uh, the, whatever dish it is. My mom used to make uh, in the crock pot pinto beans. And I I don't remember there being cornbread. Maybe it's because I wasn't a huge fan of cornbread when I was younger. But I do remember those pinto beans. Man, cooking all day. Hmm. You can probably smell it now. See who has pinto beans this week. I have turned out to be a pretty good pinto bean cook, if I say so myself. Uh, but man, I love those pinto beans. And especially then also, this was a different meal, mom's meatloaf. Mom's meatloaf was probably more my birthday meal than anything. I had meatloaf, and of course with it came green beans, mashed potatoes, and which color gravy? Has to be brown gravy, okay? It's the only way to do that, right? Good, good things, mom's cooking was the best. Not so fine and good as long as I lived at home. But what <coughs> happens to a young person? They grow up and they gotta move out. Maybe you, uh, maybe for you as, you as you thought about your life there, maybe you went off to school, maybe it was military, maybe you just got a job and moved away. Maybe you're still there, that's okay. We can deal with that. But as you got into those later years, let's think about the meals. No more mom's cooking, meatloaf, pinto beans, whatever. Then the meals turned into what? Ramen noodles. <laughs> Mac and cheese without milk or butter, but enough water to get you by, right? What else? Fast food, thank you. Somebody confessed where I was going to go next if you didn't bring it up. Pizza. <coughs> tuna, yeah, tuna. That was kind of extravagant, too. I suppose tuna might have been extravagant. What a difference. Mom's cooking on the one hand, nutritious, tastes awesome, ramen noodles on the other. And so if you're not familiar with ramen noodles, right, this is the soup that uh, it's like five or six for a dollar kind of thing. Sodium levels through the roof, okay? Uh, not, not the best stuff for you. This is kind of what I think Isaiah is getting at today. It's what God is speaking to us. Listen to what he says. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. He who has no money, come. Buy and eat. Come buy wine, milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Kind of sounds familiar. College students, no money, spending money on things that we really shouldn't. Mom calling you home. Come. Come eat. God is calling to you. Come. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Have no money? Come. What an invitation God gives to us. Notice he, he, he gets to something very specific. You have, you have nothing to offer me, right? That's no, the no money? No problem. Come to me. I have something for you. Let me ask this question. Do you have anything do you have anything to offer God? Anything that he needs, right? When you talk about this exchange for food or whatever, and you're paying somebody, the money is something they need. Does, does God need anything?
anything from you? Do you have anything God can use? Some people might say, well, I can give him my praise and my thanks, but, but does God need it? No. The truth is God needs absolutely nothing from you. And that's actually a very good thing. Because you have nothing, nothing to offer him. Yeah, again, praise and adoration, but those are things do him. But he doesn't need them. You have nothing that God needs. Help. He may desire from you, but nothing that you need. And he says, come. Come and let me give to you. And the things he wants to give you are good. Now, there is a little critique here. He says, come, why do you spend your money on that stuff? That stuff that's not bread. Stuff that does not satisfy. Now, he's asking, put it in the context of what we're talking about today. Why are you, why are you buying the ramen? Why are you buying the pizza and the fast food? Things that are not good for you. You know, as much as my mom's food was good, was great, the pursuit of food then, whether it's mom's cooking, ramen, whatever, becomes unhealthy. Truth is, and I've shared this, been very open, it's still a struggle, that pursuit. I only use food as an example because of what it's sharing with us in the Word today. I love food, probably unhealthily. Each of us has things about it. Maybe it's not food for you. Maybe there's unhealthy relationships in your life. Maybe it's an, a, an unhealthy desire to seek approval from others. Or maybe things more serious, alcohol, pornography. Maybe work is the issue for you. There's all sorts of things in our lives that are unhealthy, things that we are trying to, to meet some need. Maybe it's an emotional need. Maybe there's a physical need. Whatever it is, we're trying to meet something outside of what God says is good for us, and we do ourselves harm. They do not satisfy. We continue to pursue over and over and over, and, well, it's just not good. God says, why do you labor after these things? I have something good for you, he says. His invitation, I want you to picture, it's kind of like, like mom or grandma calling you at night as you've been playing all day. Maybe, maybe if you're younger, you, you know, it was video games or some of you are playing outside, whatever. You smelled the food cooking all day. Mom says, come on, it's time to eat. There wasn't much fussing at that point. You bolted in, ready to receive what mom had prepared. The command, this call from God is not a burdensome one. He calls you, invites you to take what he has. Listen to what he says in verse 2. Listen diligently to me. Eat what is good. Delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear. Come to me. Hear that your soul may live. God's invitation is one of love and care. His words are tender to us at this point. Even as he fusses at us. Oh, why are you eating that, that stuff that's bad? Come. Eat the rich food that I have brought for you. Because you've not been taking care of yourself. You're filling things up that are not good and don't satisfy. I have something better. You know, we know those things don't satisfy. Using food as the example again, okay, you have a bad day, a little stressed out, ah, some food will help out and you feel good at the moment, but the stress comes later and once again, you need to eat something to feel better. Or maybe it's alcohol again, or kids or family or any number of things or spouses all sorts of good gifts that God gives us and we seek we seek that peace from them that they cannot give only those things that God can give only a good God pleasing satisfaction that comes from Jesus and Jesus does satisfy listen to the words again or think about the parable today here, all these people are out there. Jesus is teaching, and the, and the disciples get anxious. Why are they anxious? It's late. They're in a spot where there's not enough food. It's not going to be enough for anybody. And Jesus takes care of things. He takes those five loaves and those two fishes, and he feeds everybody. And did you catch what it said? I mean, was it okay, everybody come in line and you get your little morsel of food, you get your little ration. Did he ration the food out to everybody? 
catch what it said? They ate and they were satisfied. Jesus had compassion and he fed the people. Now here's a physical feeding and he does offer some physical things to us. Jesus offers himself. He calls you to feed. He calls you to receive his gifts. Maybe it's time in the word. He invites you to read your Bible. Ah, Pastor, I don't understand that thing half the time when I read it. Well, keep reading. Talk to other people. Be in a Bible study. Come see Pastor Chris. Come see myself. Feed on what he has to offer. Be in worship. I'm glad you're here. God is pouring out his gifts. You heard Pastor Chris announce once again, your sins are forgiven. You, you, you confess early that I have fed on all sorts of things that, that do me no good this week. And Jesus said to you, I forgive you. Here, you come. You're going to receive Lord's Supper today. Jesus feeds you with his very body and blood. You have words of forgiveness spoken over you again, over and over, all this making you whole. Pray. Talk to God. Maybe it's out loud, maybe it's silent. If you're driving, please keep your eyes open. God invites you in so many ways to receive what he has to offer. To turn away from the things of the world. Things that don't satisfy. Things that can't satisfy. Come to Jesus. Hear his invitation and be satisfied in him. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus from now to life everlasting.